What's up everybody, Rob here, and welcome to the Noob DM. Today, we're going to be going over the Wailing Woman, also known as the Banshee. In D&D lore and popular culture, the Banshee is known as being an evil spirit that goes through and harms people, even kills people, with the sounds of its shrieking voice. In this video, I want to review the mythology of the Banshee and see how it compares to the D&D lore. Now before we do that, let's go over a couple of facts about the Banshee. Actually, I don't know if you can call it a fact, since it's based after a fake creature, but whatever, you get the point. Now, officially, the Banshee made its first appearance in Dungeons & Dragons in the 3rd edition in 2002. This was in the second Monster Manual. Now, the reason I say officially is because, technically, the Banshee didn't make an appearance in Dungeons & Dragons until this point. Before then, there was another monster called the Groaning Spirit, and this pretty much was the exact same thing as a Banshee in every aspect except name. Now, in both cases, they were known as evil undead spirits that used its deadly shrieks to kill its prey. Now, the Banshee was a fairy that was based in Irish lore, but was eventually incorporated into the Scottish and Welsh lore as well. It also makes appearances later on in history and Middle Ages lore as well. The Banshee was considered a creature of the night that would show up in dwellings and more or less wail or keen to kind of signify the passing of someone in the household. Now, this could be either an elder that's about to pass from old age, or it could be the indication of news coming that a family member has died in battle. Either way, the wailing of the Banshee was supposed to signify death was either about to happen or has happened. Now, to make this very clear, the Banshee did not kill. It just gave a warning of death. The point of the Banshee didn't seem to be about bringing death, but more or less to give a forewarning to the family so that they have time to prepare themselves for death that's about to come. It was initially thought that there were a handful of Banshees, and these Banshees belonged to the households of families that were descendants of the original inhabitants of Ireland. Now, as time passed and families grew and people moved out of the country and people married into the families, the idea that there were a, there was a numerical value of Banshees kind of faded away. So now that we have an idea of what the Banshee was in its mythological stories, let's go through and discuss how the idea of the Banshee came about. So it seems as if the idea of the Banshee was created through two different sources. Now the first source seems to be based after women at the time who were called Keening Women. Now these women would be hired to go to funerals and sing these laments in this Keening style. Now while these women were highly sought after, they were thought of as sinners because they would accept alcohol as a form of payment for performing these laments. A lot of people actually began to think that Banshees were these keening women after they had passed. Now the other half of the Banshee's creation came about because of the Banshee's tendency to appear at night. People would hear a certain noise at night and in the morning they would wake up and find someone had passed. Or they would receive a letter from somebody saying that one of their loved ones had passed away. What also sings at night that was located in that area? Barn owls. Yep, people started hearing the sound of these barn owls at night, and they started to associate that sound with the appending news of death. If you want an example of how these owls sound, listen to the beginning of my video again. That sound that you hear is the sound of a barn owl. Now, as for the appearance of the Banshee, there are quite a few different variations. Some people say it's a really pretty young woman. Other stories say it's an old, ugly hag. Uh, but the point of it is, is that typically it's a female who has more or less like a translucent ghost-like body. There are also stories that say the Banshee takes on certain forms 
depending on how it feels about the family that is about to experience the death. If it's a family that the Banshee has good feelings toward, then it'll appear as a young, beautiful woman who sings kind of a soothing melody. If it's a family that the Banshee doesn't like, it appears as an ugly, wailing, screeching hag. So with all that being said, how does the Banshee compare to the lore of the Banshee in D&D? It doesn't. Now, the Banshee I'm about to discuss in D&D is based after the 5th edition Banshee, but a lot of this does carry over to previous editions. So, in D&D lore, Banshees are evil spirits that use its screams to kill its prey. We saw in the mythology that that's not how the Banshee acts. The Banshee actually warns of death and is an omen of death and doesn't actually at least directly cause any pain or death to the person that's about to pass. While it may be looked down upon because it is associated with death, the Banshee in mythology wasn't evil. It was just the herald of death. Now, D&D lore also says that the Banshee inhabits a certain area where its physical body died and that this is the area that it haunts and it attacks any that... Uh, intrudes on its land, and it also says that it hoards a lot of uh, valuable and beautiful items. Well, mythologically, the Banshee really only inhabited households, and while the Banshee didn't hoard uh, valuable items, the closest thing, I guess, mythologically that would compare to this is that there are a few stories where the Banshee would leave little combs, uh, just pretty little hair combs, laying around the house. And if a child found it and picked it up, the Banshee would come and whisk them away to the fairy land. The point of all that is, at least in mythological lore, the Banshee wasn't evil, it wasn't a collector of fine goods, it wasn't very concerned with its appearance or anything. The Banshee was just an omen of death. Now to switch gears for a minute, I want to talk about the actions and the actual stats of the Banshee really quick. The first thing that I notice is that the Banshee is a charisma-based creature. This may or may not make sense depending on how you look at it, and it's really up to your interpretation. Personally, I think it makes sense uh, with the Banshee being a creature that uses its intimidating features and its scream to put off a very fearful and frightful uh, presence. Now, looking at the three actions in the stat block for the Banshee, that's the point where I start disagreeing with what's written down in the Monster Manual. It has Corrupting Touch, which does necrotic damage, and I guess it makes sense. It gives the Banshee a melee attack, so it's just not an entirely ranged creature. But that also leads to problems later on. The next action is the horrifying visage of the Banshee, and more or less any creature that's within 60 feet of the Banshee that can have line of sight of it uh, has to make a constitution saving throw at the beginning of its turn, and if it fails, it's frightened of the Banshee and has to, you know, more or less run away and is scared of it, and they get to make a saving throw at the end of their turn. And if they succeed the saving throw, they're then immune to the Banshee's, I guess, ugly appearance. At least for the next 24 hours, which I don't really understand that in general. I know it's used a decent bit in D&D, but I just don't understand the idea of, okay, well, I'm not scared of you now, but we'll see how I feel about it tomorrow. Now, this is one where it just doesn't make sense, because there isn't much in the mythological lore that really says the Banshee was just so ugly it would cause people to run away in fear. Uh, the Banshee was more known for its shrieks and its wailing and its keening, but not as much for having an ugly appearance. Now, there are times where it's mentioned as taking the form of an ugly hag, but it's never referenced as just being so ugly that people were terrified of what they saw. And last, we get to its third action, the whale. So I can do this once a day, and any creature that's within 30 feet of it has to make a saving throw. 
And if it succeeds at saving throw, it takes damage. I think it's like 3d6 or something like that. And if it fails at saving throw, it's dropped to zero hit points. So I see two issues with this. First is that the Banshee didn't use it screaming to kill or injure anyone. It just used it as a warning. And second, the Monster Manual only allows this Banshee to do its whale once a day. At no point in the lore does it say that the Banshee ever has to stop doing its whale. Um, if anything, I would consider the, the mythology of the Banshee to more or less make it keen and shriek and wail all night long. No, don't get me wrong. I know you can alter what's in the Monster Manual to fit your needs. If you want it to be able to wail every single turn, that's fine. But I just think it's a little bit funny that they have it written as just once a day when the Banshee is more or less known for being very loud and screaming and wailing. So if you haven't noticed, I don't really see the 5th edition Monster Manual Banshee matching up very well with the mythological lore of the Banshee. So that being said, let's go through and maybe see what the 5th edition Monster Manual Banshee may be more related to and discuss why these changes were made. So while researching the Banshee, I realized that the Banshee and the 5th edition Monster Manual seems to be a combination between three different uh, monsters. Uh, first, it seems it's very similar to a Wraith. It also has slight touches of a Siren. And third, it seems that they're more leaning toward a monster called a Banai. So without getting into too much detail about each of the monsters, I do want to briefly touch on how they're similar to the 5th edition Monster Manual Banshee. Now as for the Wraith, at least comparing it to the 5th edition Monster Manual description of it, it is a, a ghostly spirit that is more or less pure evil or full of hatred, and its inevitable goal seems to be to wipe out uh, any life it comes across. This seems to fit a little bit more with the Banshee description because it seems the Banshee in 5th edition is a lot more aggressive and more willing to track you down if you get too close by and attack you and do its best to try to kill you. Now, as for the Siren, I feel like that one's slightly obvious. The Sirens were known as these female beings that would sing and enchant sailors and draw their ship toward their sinking, which would inevitably lead them into crashing into a big mound of rocks and sinking their ship, killing all the sailors. Now, while their sinking didn't directly harm the sailors, it at least did have an impact on affecting, at least mentally, the sailors. Um, the mythology of the Banshee in no way dictates that it, that its voice and its shrieking hurt anybody or even affected those that are living. Like I said, it was just meant to be a warning. Third is the Ban Nye, which is a Scottish-based mythological creature that has some similarities with the Banshee, but is still its own separate creature. Now, the Ban Nye was also a herald of death, uh, or more or less a death omen. But instead of coming to somebody's house, people would, say, be walking down the road, and they would see what appeared to be an old woman on the side of a stream washing some clothes. And as they approached the stream, they realized that there was a lot of red in the water. And as they got even closer, they realized that those clothes started looking fairly familiar, and eventually realized that this old woman is washing my clothes. The Ban Nye was a creature that was thought to more or less take the clothes of those that were going to go out and die in battle and would wash the clothes and clean them in a stream or a pond or some source of water. And if you saw this person washing your clothes, it was more or less an omen that you were going to die soon. I'm not going to go into the detail because it's kind of a long story and it does get a little bit past the PG point, but I did find it interesting that the Band Nye does have additional lore going along with it that involves you being able to uh, get a wish granted from the Band Nye if you're able to sneak up on her. 
Now the reason I think the 5th edition Monster Manual Banshee is more similar to the Band Nye than the mythology of the Banshee is because the Band Nye was more of an open world creature. While it also was a death omen and not a cause of death, it was more likely to be seen out in the open world. The Banshee seemed to be more of a household creature. It also seems that the 5th edition Monster Manual Banshee uh, resembles the Band Nye a little bit more because the Band Nye, it seemed, was typically more known as an ugly hag. She was known as having one nostril, sometimes only having one eye, and just being all around not great looking. So considering all of this, why would the 5th edition D&D Monster Manual have the Banshee be so much more different than its mythological counterpart? I think this is for two reasons. One being just common misunderstanding, misconceptions, and superstition. Mythologically, we've learned that the screaming, the wailing, the shrieking, the keening, none of that killed the person. It was just a warning. But I believe a lot of people hear the idea of the banshee would scream and then there would be a death and started connecting the two thinking that the screaming caused the death. And through that, began thinking of it less of an omen, and began thinking of it more of being some sort of monster or demon or ghost or something along those lines that was vengeful and out to kill people. When I started researching the Banshee, I thought it was a monster or a ghost or a spirit or something like that that would use its horrible voice to damage and kill the person that it approached. But, you know, it, it was something that I've learned through video games and through D&D and because of that, you know, I started seeing it as a monster. I had no idea that it didn't cause the death. It just, you know, gave everybody a heads up. Secondly, and I think this is more important to gameplay, is that a monster that's not really aggressive or doesn't really hurt you wouldn't be too much fun to fight. If all the Banshee did in D&D was shout whenever somebody was about to die, all that really does is tell you that now there are two things that you can't kill. The Banshee, because, well, it's not going to fight you back, and whoever's about to die, because they're going to die anyway. By giving the Banshee these actions, we allowed it to become more of a threat and be, become more of a monster and something to fear in the D&D world. And by doing this, we turn it from more than just some simple little ghost into something to be reckoned with. All in all, I feel like though the Banshee in the 5th edition Monster Manual is much different than the Banshee mythology, the changes needed to be made in order to make it fit into the D&D universe. So while the two different lores are very different, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. And that pretty much wraps it up for the Banshee. I hope you've all enjoyed, and if there's anything that you want to ask or anything you have to add on to about the Banshee, let me know down in the comments. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and as always, have fun.